Hello everyone, Tomo Robo here, back with more Dream Daddy. I think the audio might be a little bit loud. Hold on, let me fix that real quick. Yeah, that's a that's a good volume. Yes. So yeah, I am back to play some more Dream Daddy. And I am recording this a bit earlier than usual, mostly because I am feeling not a hundred percent today and I'm exhausted. But I still wanted to at least get an hour to recording done, and I still have other stuff I need to finish before the end of the day. So let us not waste any more time and get started. All right, continue. Ooh, we were at. It was this one, right? The, um... Cookout! This is the one! Okay, I was like, why is it black? Right, because we were sleeping, alright? Load! Excuse me. Uh, Dream Daddy? Did you crash? Oh, thank God. I was just like, uh, please don't crash on me. <laughs> Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Whoops. Huh. So, you excited for the cookout today? Hmm. If there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. <laughs> huh. Dad, you are beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Huh. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Huh? What? No! We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early. Just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with the store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Alright, at least we got, we got that in common. We're both terrible cooks. I can't even do the grill. I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except pies. I I do have confidence in making pies and Japanese curry. Mm, yum, yum. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. Joseph's got a really nice setup. It's pretty. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Mm. Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Mm. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Mm. Oh, you look, uh... 
You look like a ball of sunshine, Chris. Hi. Oh. This is Christian and Christy. Sensing a theme with the names here. Ah. They're twins. Oh god, you look even creepier. Jeez. They stare creepily and say nothing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Wait, is that... Oh my god, you're the lady from the bar! Are you the nanny or the wife? Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Hi! <laughs> Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, oh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? Hmm? I'll have to go look for him. I, I forgot her voice. It was a very sultry... <clears throat> I'll have to go look for him. Mm. What? You'll have to... Uh. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Oh. <laughs> Mary, this is our new neighbor, Tomo and his daughter Amanda. Ah. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to... Uh, Meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. <laughs> it takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> ha ha ha. My wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Wow. I think I've actually met everybody else. <laughs> Great! I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread on the table. I picked at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately starts piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. <laughs> Come on, Dad! Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. <clears throat> Dad. Ugh. They're going to talk about weather. Ugh. Go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. <laughs> This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye! Amanda shoves me in the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. No, isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in dead goth and beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Ooh. Um... I'm assuming we get to talk to everyone, but... Hmm... Hmm. Let's, uh... Let's start with this. I glance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one-upped by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. 
I don't know, would it be even more awkward if I slept with him and saw him again? Or, no, I guess either way it's gonna be awkward, so, huh. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. Tomo! How the heck are ya? Settling into the neighborhood all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. <laughs> That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh boy. Tomo, have you met Robert yet? Yes, we've met. <laughs> Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. <laughs> well, at least he's talking to me. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. <sighs> it's good to see you talking your daughter out- Oh, uh, duh! Talking and- uh. It's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. And it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves... being inside. Hmm. Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being... inside... making art. She won a local competition for that art. Yup. I'm trying to one-up him again. Did I put it on too strongly? I'm not good at breaking. I break bad! <laughs> Robert stares at me blankly for a second. I'm sorry, I'm bad at breaking! <laughs> anyway... I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Same here. Well, things change once you have a kid. Wait. What happened the last time? <laughs> Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the back. Oh, the just. <laughs> well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny Boy's a strong kid. Met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. They build him tougher out there. Anyway, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle when the rope bridge snaps. Holy crap! That's a. Uh... It's intense. You could see the bone popping out through the skin. Ow! Johnny boy's screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress. I'm able to dress the wound, but now I got a fireman carry a six foot, one hundred and eighty. Oh my god! Let me take a sip of drink and start that sentence over again. <laughs> I'm able to dress the wound, but now I got I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. There we go. <laughs> I won't lie to you. There were moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy. But you build a bond with your brothers in arms, and that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. I guess that's camping for you. My god! <laughs> Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. Hey. I'm just kidding. Son of a bitch. My friend John and I went in a tubing down a river and he lost a flip-flop. Miss that kid. Oh. Son of a bitch. Brian and I laugh nervously. <laughs> or am I kidding? God damn it, you're one of those, Robert. Noted. I'm on to you. Never trust you, Robert. Brian and I tense up again. Hey. I'm kidding. Yeah. Phew. Huh. Amanda and Daisy bell up to us, laughing. Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her, like a steering wheel. Aww, they're being friends! 
We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors! Quick, hit the emergency escape button! But the trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Uh, then hit the brakes, I guess, and then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you must have to eat me. You might have to eat me, I mean. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although, I'm not sure if I have the materials required to properly cook you. Mm. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. No! None of that, Robert! I am never trusting you! Robert! Uh. Wait a sec. Are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers? Yeah! Amanda and I love that show! Uh. It's the best, especially that episode where Callum hides a friend's keys and... Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient curse of the urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah! Such quality reality television! I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. Alright, Daisy. I found us a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over- Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. That's so cute, aww. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Yeah. Okay. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend. All right. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Uh -huh. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way of kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm, it's nice to see he's not trying to one-up me this time. Yeah, maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? <laughs> she just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence, or she could just not really feel like interacting with any of them. I was sort of like that when I was younger. <laughs> there it is. I wouldn't worry too... I, worry, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. Aww. <laughs> she bit people too. <laughs> oh, oh, kids, right? Gotta love him. You're required to by law. I hear that. <laughs> well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet up with some of the other fellas. That was very pleasant, and Robert actually was, you know, he participated in the conversations and told a, you know, interesting lie story. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was going to be really awkward between us, but it wasn't, so I guess we made a good choice then? But yeah, one of the reasons why I didn't want to sleep with him right away is because I wondered if that would just give the impression that, oh, we're just going to be fuck buddies when, like, I actually do want to get to know him before. I want to get to know, I want to get to know everyone before we take the next step, pretty much. Like, I feel like it's going to 
mean that much more in the end. Alright, anyway, let's go down the list. Talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Hmm. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. I don't know any of these voices. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. And to try to take something like that, say, the Rocco period, and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> uh, mm. Let's talk to Craig since he's feeling like, not included in the conversation. <laughs> I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. How'd resistance training go to the uh, good? How'd resistance training go the other day? Oh. Great, little River here is a great cheerleader, aren't you, little bro? Aren't you, tiny bro? Whatever. Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. Oh, oh excuse me. Jeez. <clears throat> I can't stop burping for some reason. I'm just having regular water. Ugh. Anyway. You can do it, Dad! I'm so proud of you! I'm so sorry for poopy on you- Oh, Yo. <laughs> she must be a handful at that age. Hmm. Oh, they always are. Whoa. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs the river's arms again and waves them around. Mm. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. Ew. Oh my God, I'm just look. I just noticed now, but in the artwork, it looks like what is it? Craig, Matt, and Hugo are all holding hands. <laughs> mm. How are you settling in? Oh. Uh, Hmm. I would say it's, uh, yeah. There's still a few odds and ends uh, to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. Nice. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Tomo, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Hey. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting, they're all sitting cross-legged in the grass picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl the girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Oh. Aww. Love her hair. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Oh. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Hmm, nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Hey. Oh my god, the flower crown appeared on it! Ah, oh, so cute! Huh, hey Tomo, this is my daughter. Hello. Carmencita? Carmen Sita? I'm Carmen Sita. <laughs> Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look! I'm making friends! Yeah. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually. Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop? And my old colleague friend? And, uh, 
Your teacher? Hey. Oh, hi, Mr. Vera. I didn't realize you were na- I didn't realize we were neighbors. Ah. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term paper? Ugh. Ha ah, uh, great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Sweet Manchego. <laughs> what? Sweet what? <laughs> Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot he must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Uh oh. What huh? happened? Ernest Hemingway, nice. Oh yeah, and he was doing a he was teaching his class about um the the man in like the old like the old fisherman story. I forgot the name of it, but they Yeah. The old man in the sea, I think it was called. Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Hmm? Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Oh. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of a cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. Hmm. My goodness, you got a problem, child. Unbelievable. Excuse me. <sighs> Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Oh. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Oh, nearly burnt down half the yard. Mm. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burnt down half the yard. Oh, no. And then it spread onto my lawn and burnt down half of my yard, too. <sighs> oh, here we go. I have a hoodie like this, actually. Nice and orange. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Tomo, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Just give him like the really weird voice. <laughs> nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Doesn't matter. Hmm? Ernest. Okay, okay. I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah. Good for you. Um... Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dude to blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. <sighs> Ernest! Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Look at that face. Look at that nasty snot face he's got. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems... Nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Oh. I'm so sorry. He's having a real, really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Hmm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm a... I'm, I'm cool as a cucumber! Oh. See? That right there? You can't say that. Oh. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. I, uh... Don't know. Hey. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, We've become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Oh god. <laughs> Amanda! I'm cool, right? 
Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Oh no. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. Yeah, I agree. I'd rather you all aim to be good, responsible dads than just trying too hard to impress. <laughs> we can't all be best friends with our kids. It's just, it just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time where, when it won't be like that anymore. Is college when that happens? Mm. Don't let us eat up your time, Tomo. Go meet some other people around the neighborhood. Okay, cool. We just have uh, Joseph and Damien to talk to. Let's hear another sip of drink. Ah. Yum yum. All right. I spot Joseph chatting with a guy from Dead Goth and Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. Mm. So I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Huh. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting choice. Uh. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. Hmm. Tomo. I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design, uh, design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. Hmm. Judging me! <laughs> How do you do? I don't believe I had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. <laughs> Damien's face turns bright red. I... I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously. And to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating, indeed. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. <clears throat> Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Oh. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. Look over to Amanda who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. Oh my. Oh, let me just... <clears throat> Hey, Amanda! Would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I clicked away for a second. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as the hips as a twee hipster with some norm core leanings. <laughs> try to back away to give the effect that I'm yelling. I don't know if the microphone caught that, but hopefully it did. Bats are cool, though! I agree. Bats are cool. Ah, uh. uh, pity. Uh. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Eh? Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Last Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as God? Oh. That it would... That it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch at your service. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, 
producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. My goodness! Eh? Well, he's got charm. <laughs> Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. <laughs> My, do you know how to treat a lady? Ah. Oh goodness, the creepy twins. Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twins, <laughs> twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Yeah, they're so creepy. <laughs> the, are they imitating, like, the twins from The Shining? Eh, hey. Oh yeah, for sure. So The Shining. <laughs> Won't you come play with us? Mm. Uh... Come play with us forever. Oh. <laughs> Guys, enough with the creepy twin stick. We've talked about this. Eh? Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they get they got that from? Hmm. Mary pops in to the conversation, wine in hand. Oh. I uh don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. Hmm. I think I might have tapped over a Veggie Tales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? Veggie Tales. <laughs> she takes another sip of her wine. <laughs> Where's Krish? Uh. Wasn't he with you? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you. Had him a moment ago. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips a glass to me. Mm. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fifth. Come on. I have squeezed four little. <sighs> Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Chris? That would be great. Oh my god. I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> Mary. Huh? Okay, jeez. Hmm. Trouble in paradise? Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Oh, you're. Oh, I should have known. The goth kid from the school is the son of Damien. I should have known. <laughs> Dad, can we go now? Hmm. Ah, Lucian, have I introduced you to Tomo yet? Hey, it's that punk kid from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. <laughs> Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? <laughs> Coming right up, bud. Are you a vegetarian? Yep. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described the carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad. Hey. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the girl. Just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from under his underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like it looks like the bottom of an anchor. Ooh. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Nice. Yep. I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? What? What? <laughs> Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets and revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a sticker, poke tattoo, last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian! Oh no. We'll talk about this later. 
That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Oh. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful though, that number carries weight. Man, Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped it out of the room with the Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. <laughs> and without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing it as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. <laughs> you guys, I think this is my first time in front of a grill. Oh wait, you guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? <laughs> I'm gonna read that wrong. <laughs> He's working faster now. Effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. You probably didn't know this, Tomo, but Joseph's known around here for his growmanship. Uh. He is unbelievable! Oh my god. Nice. I've tried to get to his level, but. I just can't catch up. Oh! Oh no! Here comes all the dad puns! Oh! Oh. <laughs> oh. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. <laughs> Mustard, do we keep talking about this? Can't we just appreciate the artist? <laughs> I've never seen him make a Mistake. <laughs> hey. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. <laughs> Please stop. Of all the children at the party, <laughs> all the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. Wink. All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Fuck! <laughs> uh, Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Hey. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul de sac. Hey. Kinda nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. <laughs> hey, why don't you add us all on dad book? Dad book? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Eh? Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. <laughs> Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between a common Sita and those and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Ugh. You got weird kids, Joseph. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Ah. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Hmm. I got a. I mean, I got a burger in me. <laughs> I felt like I was at a networking event. She comes in playing paranormal ice for truckers. Hmm. Yeah. Sweetie, if I can impart any sort of wisdom upon you right now, and not that this was a bad situation, but if you ever in an uncomfortable situation, always look for the silver lining. The silver lining get the silver linings get you through the other side. 
We ate rock and burgers today, and it was good. Amen. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dad Book. Maybe I will if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Yay! We socialized and ate delicious burgers. Amanda and I arrived home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm. Seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Ah. Actually, yeah. I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Is that okay? Of course. Keep me posted. And be home before midnight. Hmm. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Ah. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Oh. Dad, you are not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No. I've never done that and I will never do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... Work on some stuff, see how long I can sleep for... Maybe work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has... I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Or Gavin? Gavin. Gavin. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I love to be able to cook like that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food for real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on- Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of a Wine and Dine Mastermind. And also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. Send a text. Hey kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now. In which case, I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. Mm. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of... socializing. <laughs> I check my watch again. And then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay. See, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? After an hour passes, now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meat Hell are not only assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerb- Ugh, my god. Exacerbating it. But possibly exacerbating it, with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' phone names? That's a good point. Who is Emma P? <laughs> I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God it's her. 
Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally. Finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank god you're safe. Aww. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Huh. Oh, whoops. Guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda, Anne. Oh. We're bringing out the full name. Hmm. Whoa. We're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew, and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out, and I was about to call the cops. Hmm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I don't like your attitude. I have a right to be concerned. I was scared. I've been in situations like this before where I... Not me waiting for someone to come back home, but like just... I was the one who came back home late. <laughs> uh... Hmm... I want to be honest and just say I was just really scared. You weren't responding and it was... It was just... Like when you're dead. I have to stop myself from tearing up. Huh? Oh, Dad, I didn't mean to... I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me, just... Please don't do that again. Uh. Uh. Alright. I'm gonna go to bed now. Uh. Oh... I guess that means that... I can't remember if this was... If this was brought up, but did our... Like, our wife, did she... Die of a car accident? Or just like maybe she died like during the night or what? I don't know, but if that's the case, then yeah, that's a valid reason to be worried. <laughs> the trauma. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey. I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was gonna do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry Pops. I won't do it again. Well, I don't want to say good, just because it seems like, oh, good, but, hmm. Instead of these two, I want to choose. Trust you to make good choices, or I'm sorry for freaking out on you. Maybe this one. You're an adult now. I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Team Robo? Oh yeah! Team Robo. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on him. Already did. Bless you. Oh yeah. Amanda scarves down the eggs in the time it takes me to wash the pan. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. 
wait, one more thing before you go. Hmm. What? What's Dad Burke? Oh. It's a social media platform. Wait. Huh? What? What's a social media platform? Oh my god, we are... <laughs> we are not in the times. <laughs> Tomo Dad is kind of a little bit behind the times. <laughs> Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda, I'm an old man, even though I look like I'm 12 and almost the same age as you. <laughs> I, can't put, I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. All right, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Uh. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book. Which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Uh -huh. Alright, Pops. We gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Cool. We're gonna be a cool dad? Yeah, cool dad. On a Friday night, you are most likely to... Ooh. Polish and sort out my coin collection. I don't collect coins. Uh, Netflix and Grill Baby, fall asleep watching the History Channel, torment my children with dad puns, sink into blissful oblivion. The closest thing I have done the most is probably just fall asleep while watching something. <laughs> So it's probably going to be this, like, I, it's not always the History Channel, but just like TV shows or like movies and stuff. I have I have just fallen asleep while watching, so maybe this. If you had one thing to take with you on a des desert island, what would it be? My trusty grill, no. The Lost Shaker of Salt, cast away on DVD for instructional purposes. Wait. Is that just the DVD? Like, will we actually- Does that include the TV and like the DVD player? Or just the DVD? Cause that would do nothing. <laughs> A boat, obviously. I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. Uh, yeah, a boat. Cause even if we can't, like, boat our way to civilization, we can at least use the boat for like, just storage purposes or have- It'll help us make a makeshift shelter. What are your turn-ons? Oh yeah, we can also use the boat to like go out fishing if we need to. What are my turn-ons? Strong dad arms, tennis shoes with long white socks. Oh uh, well, I've never, I never did this. Even when when I played tennis, I never wore long white socks. <laughs> A well manicured lawn, street smarts, top tier groomanship, comfortable with crying. Hmm, turn ons. It's a turn on. Mm. Hmm. I don't care about lawns. The tennis thing is already a no, so. I don't care about grill. <laughs> uh, and that's totally, I just realized now that like that's totally like catering to Joseph. <laughs> Comfortable with crying. Uh, maybe street smarts? Except for these two. But I kind of already proven that I have strong dad arms, so maybe this. What did you want to be when you grew up? Technical writer for manuals and instructionals, salty boat captain, a pro skater who is also an astronaut, a good father, the president of space. If I was being truthful, like to myself, like little Tomo, uh, she had wild, wild ambitions. Like I was the one. I'm pretty sure most kids were like this, but I was like, I'm gonna be a veterinarian, I'm gonna be a professional skater, I wanna be an astronaut, I wanna be a doctor, like, I wanna be so many things, but I 
for the longest time, I was interested in, like, just either being a doctor or an astronaut or skating. And I did actually yep, do figure skating for a while, so this is probably the closest one. I'm not... <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? Ooh. Uh, war documentaries, Sean Connery's entire filmography, anything on Laserdisc, romance comedies, oh god, no. Uh, whatever will make me cry, no. All comedies that haven't aged well, not my age, maybe. Hmm. Favorite movie genre? Hmm. It's a toss-up between war document documentaries, Sean Connery's entire filmography, or old comedies that haven't aged well. It's either those three. Hmm. Hmm. That's my favorite, though. Hmm. Man. My goodness, I don't know. Maybe this. What's your ideal date? Ooh. Napping together? Doing a 1000 piece puzzle together? Eating a healthy dinner at 4 p.m., trying to geocache but getting hopelessly lost, arson, <laughs> or being emotionally vulnerable. My ideal date. I kind of want to just want to pick arson for fun because, well, the people people who know me know that I love playing with fire, like, especially when we go camping, like, when we went camping, like, I'm almost always the person in charge of making the fire. <laughs> and I, I, maybe arson, just for shits and giggles, like, it could just be like a joke, then like, FIRE! <laughs> what do you never leave home without? A sensible cardigan? Nah. My sick vape, I don't vape. Um, my book of word jumbles and a pen. No. A cool knife. Actually, I do have a knife. I used to carry it more often, but um, the reason why I haven't been carrying a knife recently is because I kind of misplaced it. But all throughout high school and like, I usually carried a, a knife with me, but yeah, I don't actually know what happened to my knife. I, I I remember I had it, but just I realized like last year I I don't know where it went. Like, did I leave it at someone's home or like I I don't know. Uh, my crippling low self esteem. Oh, I frequently forget my phone, keys, and wallet at home sometimes. No, I'm pretty diligent with those. I guess cool knife is the closest one for me. I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories. No, not really. How proud I am of my child. Potential ends of the world. If I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. Oh my god, that's so Joseph. <laughs> um when I can next get a cup of coffee or lawnmower modifications. What do I think? Spend a lot of time thinking about. Okay, um. I guess in this case, how proud I am of my child or. Hmm. Yeah, maybe this one. How proud I am of my child. Profile complete. See? That wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them. Or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, dad.
cool. Welcome. You Welcome. Best. Sweet. Oh, man. So can we actually go and see, like... Ooh. Oh, nice. So we can actually go and view, like, all of the dads. Ooh, sweet. And they have hearts in them. I guess how much, like, love points we get with them? All right. How long have I gone through? Oh, quite a while, actually. All right. I am going to take a little break. And when I get back, we will we'll browse through the, portfo the portfolios of all the dads. And we will decide who we will, I guess, pursue. All right. See you guys in a bit. Bye.